Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I've got a smile on my face because today I'm going to be attempting a puzzle by a great, great constructor and, and solver, actually, Playmaker6174, whose birthday it was yesterday. I didn't know this, Playmaker6174. Had I known it, we might we might have switched this, this puzzle for yesterday's. Um, but this has been recommended. It's called Symphony. It's been recommended by some of some of the other greats of the Sudoku community, folk like Niverio and Codec, no less. So I know this is going to be brilliant, although it feels a little bit inappropriate um, that you're giving us a gift related to your birthday. Surely it should be the other way around. But anyway, Playmaker 6174, we're going to try your puzzle. Um, and uh, well, actually, I, I had a, it was it was a lovely email I had from Codec about about this puzzle, basically saying it's a fantastic puzzle. Uh, about three stars out of five for difficulty was Codec's um, suggested rating. But also, Codec said that Playmaker is responsible somehow for Codex getting together with his girlfriend. <laughs> That's absolutely brilliant. I don't know, Playmaker, how did you achieve this thing? Um, but anyway, Codex uh, clearly very much in love in the, at the moment. And I, I know he's uh, planning to come over uh, to see uh, to see Fran, I want to say, in the next few weeks. Anyway, Codex, I hope that goes well. I'm sure it will. And um, Playmaker, very well done on your, your matchmaking um, prowess. Uh, anyway, I'll read the rules of this in a moment or two's time. A few things to mention first. Let me start by saying we're going to be stream, streaming again, not screaming, hopefully, although that could be involved, uh, streaming again next Tuesday night, 10 p.m. UK time. More Islands of Insight. Love to have your company for that. Um, we've got loads of stuff going on on Patreon. I've mentioned that a lot in the last few days. I was amused to read yesterday that uh, apparently somebody has worked out that the, the current video over on Patreon of my solve of Emre Kolotoglu's region geometry is six minutes longer than the return of the king, <laughs> the third Lord of the Rings film. That's quite a long Sudoku video. Um, and I've also got a birthday to do today. So let me do that. Um, Melissa, over there in Brazil, it's your 18th birthday. And I know this because your friend Alvaro wrote to us um, and he's very grateful to you for for you recommending Cracking the Cryptic to him. So thank you for spreading the word about Cracking the Cryptic, Melissa. And I hope you have an absolutely brilliant birthday today with, of course, lots of chocolate cake. Um, and that's that's all the news. So we can kick straight into puzzle solving. Um, it's called Symphony. But I think it should be called something about, and this is clearly an owl, isn't it, in the grid? Isn't this an owl? Or am I just seeing things? One thing I will say about this puzzle, it is it is remarkably symmetrical. Um, and by symmetrical, I mean, if we drew a, can we draw a line? Yeah, let's draw a, oh no, maybe it won't let me do this. I was going to try and draw, no, it won't let me do it. Um, I can draw a line down there, look. It won't let me go any further. Um, but if we draw a line of symmetry down the center of the grid and if you fold the grid over onto itself, um, you can see that everything would sort of connect precisely. The only the only thing that wouldn't connect, I've noticed, is these X dominoes. They, they slightly miss each other. But other than that, the puzzle is absolutely perfectly symmetrical about that central column. And that is a sign of absolute genius setting. Um, because literally, the other, other, there would be two solutions to the puzzle if it was perfectly symmetrical. Um, those of you who are familiar with Girth's symmetrical placement theorem will be aware of, of, of that. Um, but but anyway, the um, yeah, it's just these X's somehow that are breaking the symmetry that exists. And we've got we've got artful owl sitting in the middle of the grid. Uh, artful owl. That's Captain Beaky. Um, and now that's going to get me thinking about Captain Beaky. He said, mm, oh, no. Oh. Said Batty Bat, I've got a wheeze. I'll fly and hide up in the trees. If hissing Sid should slither by, I'll drop a boulder from the sky. Said Artful Owl, the idea's sound. How will you lift it off the ground? Poor Batty Bat just shook his head. I hadn't thought of that, he said. Said Owl, 
The rest of us hold back. There's only one that he'll attack, said Timmy Toad. I like your plan. Good luck, said Owl, for you're the man. So Timmy Toad, his eyes are popping into the wooden night, went hopping. Captain Beaky waved his hand, followed by his trusted band. That's Artful Owl, Reckless Rat, and above the trees flew Batty Bat. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I could do more of it, but I probably oughtn't. I mean, goodness only knows what the YouTube algorithm makes of these videos. Um, I shuddered. Well, no, I think I do know. Um, uh, sorry, I'm getting distracted, ludicrously distracted. But I keep, you know, my, my brain's going in all sorts of directions. But we did get quite a lot of advice and we do get this advice periodically that we have to make our introductions snappier and perhaps filter, perhaps edit out the breathing in the videos because, you know, in the, in the days of these short attention spans, we're, we're causing people to, uh, to have to spend too much of their pre present time listening to us breathing. Uh, and Mark and I have no, we've got no clue how we would ever go about doing that in the real world. And really no interest in doing it either. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry, YouTube algorithm. People will have to still listen to us breathe um, in these videos uh, for as long as we continue to make them. Anyway, with that, with that short, uh, short segue, sorry about that. Let's move on to Symphony by Playmaker6174. Happy birthday, my friend. These are the rules of your puzzle. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, and in every three by three box. An X connects two digits that sum to 10. Okay, so those two digits sum to 10. So if this square was a three, this square would be a seven. That would how, that's how numbers work. Um, not all Xs are given. Okay, so what that means is if this was a three and this was a seven, that's absolutely fine. There doesn't have to be an X between two, two cells that sum to 10. It's just these two definitely do add to 10. These two add to 10, these two add up to 10, and those two add up to 10. So we know positive information. Um, digits along an arrow sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So we, got, we have got a whole plethora of arrows today. So these look like they're the longest arrows. Those three digits there, you add them up and you put the answer in that cell. So if this was one, two and three, you would write six into that cell there. That's how arrows work. Along a green line, two adjacent digits have the difference of at least five. So this is a so-called German whispers line. That's how this constraint is sometimes known. So if this was a one, this would have to be at least six because it needs to be at least five different from one. So it could be six, seven, eight or nine. That's how green lines work. And we've got one more colored line, which is the pink line. And it says along a pink line, Digits form a set of non-repeating consecutive digits that can be in any order. So if this square here was a one, this line would have to contain two, three, four, and five because the digits on it have to be consecutive. So that would be a completely legitimate way of filling that pink line. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Um... There's a couple of bits of low. Well, let's let's start with the very, very low hanging fruit, that fruit that we can practically, you know, we can almost touch our toes and pick off the floor. Um, these cells, because they add up to at least six, because one, two and three would be the minimum. Same with those cells mean that the circles here have to be at least equal to six. The other the other thing I will quickly mention is that this is a five cell pink line so that's five consecutive digits out of the digits one to nine and you can see even if we start with the lowest digit and put a one on this line there would still be a five on it and if we put a nine on the line the other extreme there would be a five on it because nine eight seven six five would be the fifth digit so there is definitely a five on that pink line which means that cell can't be a five because if that was a five this line could not exist because this cell sees the entirety of that line so if we were mark we would do this now just to make sure that we we fully pencil marked only joking <laughs> oh that's another thing that sometimes happens is people think that when i do that i'm i'm somehow uh having a go at mark mark and i have known each other for 
gosh, some number of years that's, that's, gosh, it's two and a half decades at least. And um, our sense of humours are, are fairly robust and involve a lot of taking the mick out of one another. So please don't worry if either of us, um, if it happens on streams sometimes, we might, we might have a go at one another, but um, we love each other very much really. Um, now, now what am I meant to do to do this? It's German whispers lines can't have five on them because if you put five on a German whispers line, this digit here would have to be at least, well, if you go upwards, it would be at least 10. And if you go downwards, it would be zero or lower, not valid Sudoku digits. So five in this column looks a little interesting all of a sudden, because it can't go here for the reasons we mentioned before. So five is in one of three places in column five. Yeah, we've also got all of the, well, all of these arrows in the middle. So Artful Owl's eyes and whatever those are, they all have one cell arrows emanating from them. So rather, rather annoyingly, these are all doing some Sudoku related trick, I think, so because obviously those two digits are the same, aren't they? which means by Sudoku, they're going up there somewhere. These are going up there somewhere. These are going down there somewhere. And these are going down there somewhere. Um, okay, there's one thing I can see as a result of that then, which is a strange thing. One of these digits is going in the corner of the puzzle. I don't know which corner, because it depends which one of these is bigger. Um, yeah, and I hope, is, is it clear why that is? I mean, the reason is one of these can't go, the bigger one, whichever of these is bigger. Let, let's just put some numbers in. It's going to be easier if I do that. Like sort of something I can see without, without being terribly useful about it. So in, you can see here that the right side is bigger. It is an eight. So could we ever put eight on this arrow? Well, clearly not. So it has to go in the corner. Um, and that's going to be that obviously whichever one of these is bigger it can't go on the other one's arrow so one of these will end up in one of those corners <laughs> I don't even know <laughs> I don't know why I'm mentioning that I just noticed it um, it's probably going to be to do with the fact that that there all of these have to be different uh, that is true isn't it I think that is true, yeah. Yeah, because whatever these are, uh, let's make, just give that a color. There are four, let's start. There are four ways of making 10 in two digits. You could do one, nine, two, eight, three, seven, and four, six. Oh, it's not, oh, it's not fives in. No, it's, I suddenly thought maybe it's fives in these boxes. I was suddenly seeing I could only put five into, well, actually I can't put it in the corner. So five is in these cells in boxes four and six because you can't put a five on an x domino because the other digit would also be five um but these digits here obviously neither of these can now be an orange let's imagine this was a one nine pair neither of these could be a one nine pair and this can't be a one nine pair so this sits alone within the set let's make this blue neither of these can be blue so now neither of these can be blue or orange. So they have to be two different flavors of X domino. So these together are the four flavors of X domino. Now, what does that mean? So that means that whatever this digit is, and this is not a five, it lives in the green gray section of the grid. Because, because it's a high digit. So if we think about every X domino, it has a high digit partnering up with a low digit. So the high digit here, which can't live in these X dominoes, must live in one of those X dominoes. And therefore this digit, which is also a high digit and therefore must be in one of the dominoes, but not in these dominoes by Sudoku, that digit is in one of those squares. 
I've got a bad feeling about this that this is not actually I think it's all true but I don't actually think it's telling us very much maybe it's low digits then because these arrows have to have quite a few low digits on them but the problem is that could be a low digit if these two digits were low and by low I mean lower than five say these two digits were from one two three and four ah right okay well that um, there are a number of things I'm suddenly seeing here actually let's let's look at those four digits as a collective so these yellows they must include at least one digit that is higher than four because imagine these were one two three and four then because each x domino also includes a one two three and four the only place for one two three and four in row uh, in row four then would be in these squares and these these are only three squares you can't put one two three and four into three squares so there's no way that these are only selected that the yellow cells are only selected from one two three and four now now as i say that i realize that i could have done that a different way by thinking about five in boxes four and six because we, we were just looking at this five in each of these boxes is in one of two dominoes but that domino can never be those two dominoes can it because the five, if we put a five in this domino and a five in this domino we're going to break sudoku so if we well we could the thing is we could put five on both 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 tracts of yellow if we like but that but at least one tract of yellow must contain a five because we can't put five here and here which means at least one of these is big and by big i mean at least equal to eight because if there was a five on here let's say this was a five the minimum we could accompany that with would be a one two pair so we would actually get we'd get at least to eight wouldn't we which feels like it might be interesting so hmm. sorry I'm just trying to think about that is it necessarily the case you see if we only had one high digit in these yellow cells then the three low digits would go there and that would give us the parity of the whisper although that's very difficult as well actually my brain is telling me that doesn't work because of this but that might be wrong let me just think about that so if I can prove if that's low and the if, if these three are all low and that's low good grief that's so that's very difficult but that doesn't work right wow okay so let's let's stick with my um with my idea before where we said that there has to be a five in at least one of the yellow squares and that's true let's make it this square obviously we've got a lot of symmetry here so we we we've we no idea which which one of these four is going to be a five i'm just going to pick this one for a moment now let's imagine the other squares are all lower than five i'm going to claim that if we if, if that's true the puzzle's broken but it's complicated because if these are all lower than five whatever this is it's a low digit and therefore it exists in one of the x dominoes 
and it's not it's not in any of those so it's going to be one of these in fact if it's that one it's going to be in one of those two that means this digit goes in one of those three squares the same is true for these two they're going to be over here and they are going to go in those squares so this square becomes low now one thing i didn't talk about i often talk about it when we talk about whispers lines um, but there are certain secrets that evolve along green lines that are important now we've talked about one of the secrets which is that five can't appear anywhere on the line now one feature of the green line that emerges from that is that every digit along a green line we can therefore classify in one of two ways it must be either lower than five or higher than five and the crucial thing to appreciate is that you can never have two lower than five or two higher than five digits in adjacent cells because imagine this was a one two three four as well these cannot be five apart it just isn't it's just not mathematically possible so this has to be from a high digit this has to be from a high digit but once this is high this can't also be high because these can't be five apart so you get this oscillation along the line so what that allowed me to see when I was thinking about this is that that's going there but now we've got the most incredible constraint going on in box five because all low digits have now been moved have now been used on the line so how on earth does this ren ban exist and the answer is it can exist it just can because this could be a four it won't work with any other any other if we put three in there you can see this these are going to include one two and four so we can't have there's no way either of these could be consecutive i mean it just won't work if this was a two it just again you you can't make the consecutive sequence work now if it's a four it can work because these could both be higher but i suppose you might say that five prevents that so let's move that five down there because that's not the point of this if this is if this is four the, the point is these two can now exist they could be a five six pair but these two cannot exist because four the final secret of german whispers is that four is monogamous as six is monogamous four only partners up with one digit and that is nine and we cannot put two nines into this column that will break sudoku so this is this doesn't work i mean that's quite complicated um now we have to take a view on whether that was i think that that's likely to be intended actually because it's quite beautiful uh if if you're aware of secrets if you like your secrets and i certainly do that feels reasonable to me it feels like a it feels like a natural series of questions i.e where's five? Oh, five's got to be in yellow can I have another big digit in there or not? And then you start to figure out, ah, this is all looking rather difficult. Hmm. So I think that's probably fair. I think, well, it's certainly fair, but I think it's probably also intended. So, but what does that tell us though? Because hmm, it doesn't tell us, does it, that there's two fives on these? there's a five there's a five on one of them that's true and then on the other we've worked out well we've worked out we can't just have low digits with the other three cells so the other digit that's five or higher must be on the other arrow so there's a five on one arrow and there's a five or a six on the other arrow you can't put higher than six on a on an arrow because seven plus one plus two well let's do it like that is too high to make a single digit into the other cell so one at one yellow cell is a five definitely on the other arrow that's not got the five on it we've either got a five or a six now all i can see that's doing is it's making these very large oh no i've seen something else it's doing as well actually it's making these very large because each arrow has a five on it at least and five plus one plus two is at least eight so these must be an eight nine pair but surely it's doing something to these two squares as well 
Yeah, these have to be tiny. How tiny? Uh, no, not quite tiny enough. I was thinking they might have to be a one, two pair, but I think they might be able to include a three. Let me just think about that. If you put three into one of these squares, that would have to be on a one, five arrow. And then on the other side, so that's nine, this could be eight. That could be a one, and that could be a two, five. That would put five up there. Hmm, okay. Okay, <laughs> that's, 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 well, that looks possible to me. So, I actually don't get to learn. I, um, I mean, by uniqueness, I might be able to tell, oh, hang on, I want to restore the one to this cell. Uh, by uniqueness, I have difficulty believing that there isn't a one in one of these squares. I won't use uniqueness to solve it, but if, if this was a two, three pair, then these would both be one five pairs. And these can't both be one five pairs or the puzzle would have two solutions because there is nothing to disambiguate. There's nothing about the internal logic of this puzzle that would disambiguate this solution, which has obviously a one and a five in column one, a one and a five in column nine, and a one and a five in boxes four and six. And that solution, which has exactly the same property. Oh, in fact, the other reason that that can't exist, I've just seen, is that you can, none, none of these X dominoes could contain a one if we did that. So that's definitely wrong for a different reason other than uniqueness. So I can use that. So there is definitely a one in one of these. Uh, that's fair, isn't it? I don't really know how to pencil mark it, but one of these is a one. I, I, will, I will. I will do that to try and um, to try and tell myself that. But one of these. One of these. Oh, what's going on now? So one of these goes in here. So if that was eight. It would go in one of these. That would have a two with it. So two couldn't go in those squares. That would be a nine. Nine would go in one of these squares along with one. So the eight arrow The eight arrow definitely couldn't have six on it. So the eight arrow would have to have five on it. So the eight arrow would be. So actually, actually, we do know exactly what the structure of the eight arrow is. We don't know where it goes, which is very peculiar because it's something to do with how these X's must unwind. But where, wherever the eight goes. It can't have six on its arrow because six plus one plus two is nine. So it's got five on its arrow with a one, two pair. But, but more than that, um, it's going to be a two, five pair on top of a one. What, let me show you why. If that's eight and that's nine, we know now nine is in one of these squares. And therefore its, it's partner is going to be a one, isn't it? So this must be two five on top of a one. So that's quite interesting. We don't know where that happens. And then on the other arrow, if that's eight, this is two eight. This is two eight. This is one nine. Oh, okay. 
Uh, hang on, one thing I've seen as a result of that is that 2 is in one of those squares. Because Imagine this was the 8 again. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going backwards and forwards here. Imagine this was the 8 again. Um, then we know that there's a 2, 5 sitting beneath it. But I also know there's a 2, 8 pair sitting in the X's. And I haven't put, I've got to put 2 somewhere in row 4. So it's going to have to be in one of those squares. But I feel like that should that should that logic should work symmetrically with ones. But I'm, I haven't actually proved that. Let me think. So if this was nine and there was a one over here with the one nine pair, do I know this arrow has a one on it or not? It can't have a two on it, can it? Because there's, we've already had two twos in the row. We've got a two on the eight arrow and a two on the on the X that has the eight on it. Now, if this had three on it, we are, ah, we know that's a one. So this is at least a two on the nine arrow. Yeah, okay. So the nine arrow does have a one on it in its box. That's going to be the next thing I'm going to claim. And again, this, this is quite complicated to see, but I think it's true. Um, I can visualize it's true, but the best way of me showing you that it's true is going to be for me to put, put digits in and you'll see why I think it's true. So if that's eight, we worked out that there's an eight in one of these, there's a two eight pair here. Um, and we also worked out that because this is now nine, there's a one nine pair here. So the only way the eight arrow works is like this, which means this square cannot be a one now. So remember, there's got to be a high digit in yellow over here, which is a five or a six being added to a two or a three. So the other digit here cannot be higher than a one, because if it was, we'd be adding, say, a two and a three to another of two or three. We get five plus at least five is ten. So there is definitely a one on this arrow. And that one is going to accompany whichever one of these is one nine to plonk a one into one of those squares. So that's another little rinky dink we can now see. Now we have to get rid of all this because we don't know. We don't know which of these which of these arrows is eight or nine. Um, we've got to restore the one down here. We've got to put the one question mark here. Now. So we're still we're still not doing terribly badly. in terms of working out something. It looks like this wants to be low, doesn't it? Because we've, we've got two of the digits in here have to be low. Um. that's high it's got to be seven ah oh, that's gorgeous right i've got I, it is low this is definitely low but the reason it's low is actually nothing to do with this one two pencil mark which is really cool okay the reason this is low is because is, well, let's let's look. It's because it can't be high, actually, rather than anything else. It just can't be high. Um, if this is a high digit on the whisper, it's not eight or nine. So it's six or seven. But it's not six because we said six is monogamous. So if you put six here, this has to be double one. It's the only valid way that that can work. And that's going to break Sudoku. So so actually, the only digit this can be is seven. But this is this fails because there's there's oscillation of polarity along the whisper which means that this digit here has to be high well let's put all the options in then it's got to be higher than five so it's six eight or nine for, for the same reasons this couldn't be six this couldn't be six so this is now eight or nine on a three cell ren band well a three cell ren band must have a seven on it if it's got an eight or a nine on it um and that can't have a seven on it so that that's just fails. It fails. And that, that means 
Well, that's going to hopefully be huge, but that, that means this square is one, two, or three. It can't be four because that would require double nine. It is low. Um, this is now, this is now low and this is one, two, or three, isn't it? But it's three. When I say, but it's three, I've got a one, two pence mark here. So I'm thinking this has to be three. Um, that must be right. I can't see, I can't see why my, how my logic is faulty there. This has got to be low by polarity of the whisper. That's right. It can't be one or two because we've worked out there are these funny shenanigans going on in these squares that put one and two in row four up here. So I, it can't be four obviously because double nine, the double nine problem. So I think that has to be three. Now three has to be surrounded by eight and nine on a whisper because we need digits that are at least five away. That digit is now, whoopsie, that digit is one or two. This digit is high and it's six or seven because it can't be eight or nine, but has to be high. These two digits have to be a four or five pair. And that's because they can't involve one and two. And yet they must be consecutive with three. Good grief. I mean, that's it. That's an incredible, that, that this is the first digit. That is an incredible first digit. Now, what does that do is the next question. Aha. Uh -huh. I see what, you, I see what you've done here. Five is in one of those squares. And that's great because remember, one of the possibilities I was grappling with was that there was a five here and a five here. Well, that can't be true now because that would put five in one of those three squares in row four, whereas, and it would clash. So there's only one five now in yellow. So there's also six in yellow. So the six, the six is going to go on the nine arrow with a one, two pair. And the five goes on the eight arrow with a one, two pair. So there's never a three on any of these arrows. So this is now one, two pair. One of these arrows is two and five. And one of them is one and, uh, one and six. That's annoying. <laughs> That's so peculiar that that doesn't actually get... Um, Right, okay, but the the digit I want to say now, is this wrong? No, this is that's right. Okay, so the, the, the digit that accompanies one and two up here is six, isn't it? Because if I've got six in a yellow square and I've got six in one of the dominoes, I must have six in one of the dominoes, don't know which one. But that means six in the row in, in this row has to be in one of these squares. So these squares are one, two, and six. And these squares are seven, eight, and nine. And seven is now. Bingo, right. That is huge because look, there is a three, seven pair now in these squares. And that means neither of the green domino or the gray domino can be a, th a vertical three, seven pair. Because this square cannot be three or seven. So if these can't be three, seven pairs and this can't be a three, seven pair, which color is a three, seven pair? It's got to be this one. So that's three, seven. Oh. Oh, I was sure that was going to do something on the line. Uh, that means that there's three up here. No, and a seven. That's a three seven pair. So that's a virtual. That's a virtual thingy. Ah, but four. Four's going to save us. Right. Um, four in this box. Where does it go? Don't know. But it goes in one of those two squares by Sudoku. And therefore, there must be a six above it. Therefore, this 
cannot have a 6 on its arrow. So this has got to be a 2, 5 on top of a 1, adding up to 8, which means this is a 9, which we know goes with a 2 here and a 1, 6. And we know there's a 6 here. So that's 6, that's 1. 8 by Sudoku is now in these squares. So this is a 2, 8 pair, which means these squares don't include 8. That is an 8 in the middle of the line. That's an, that's an, well, it gives me a 9 here, I suppose. Um, this is 2. This is 5. So now I must know that these, these are a 6 and a 9, aren't they? This is a 6, 9 pair. So this is a 1, 4 pair. And I must know, right, let's tidy up some pencil marks. These two digits are five. And I want to say four. It looks right in the row, doesn't it? So we've got a four, five, a three, seven, a two, eight, a two, a one. And a pregnant pause. <laughs> um, Okay, let's get rid of that corner seven there to keep things looking symmetrical as ever. I mean, what on earth? Okay, where is nine in box nine? That feels a reasonable question. You can't put nine on a two cell arrow or this circle will be at least 10, so. 9 goes there. Right, so 9 goes here. Now, that's odd. Well... Okay, <laughs> I'm going to use the trick that we thought of at the start, which was, don't we now know which of these is a bigger number? I think we do, because by Sudoku, this digit and this digit are the same, and therefore by Sudoku they can't be 9, so they're going on the other one's arrow. So this, by dint of that logic, must add up to more than red, which means that it, it, it cannot go on red's arrow, so purple goes in the corner. Now, <laughs> what does that mean? Um, so red is at least a one and a three, I'm going to claim. Is that right? It can't involve a two. So that one and three here mean red is at least a four. And that is getting quite interesting immediately because... 4 is now the minimum digit I get to put onto this arrow on the left-hand side. And that 4 can't accompany a 1 because 1's appeared in the box. So this arrow is at least a 4 and a 2, adding up to 6, which means purple is 6, 7 or 8. And it's not 6 because there's a 6 already in column 9. So now purple is 7 or 8. Um, that might matter. Let me just think about that. Sorry. Um, it feels like there's something there, doesn't it? How do we, if that was seven... What about, right, there is a one on this arrow, because how could there not be? If this didn't have a one on it, given it can't have a two on it, this would be at least adding up to seven. And that would make, uh, because it would be at least three plus four. And that makes red at least seven. But if red is seven plus at least two, that needs to be nine, which it can't be. So there is a one on this arrow, 
which by Sudoku means there's a 1 here, because 1 can't be read. So which means that's a 2. That's that's quite nice, actually, because this square can't be 6 anymore. Remember, 6 is monogamous, only partners up with 1. So we've now done the sort of the, the spine of the puzzle, and we've got left to place 4, 5, and 6 into these squares. But don't we know, hang on, hang on, we know that digit couldn't be a 5. Right back at the start, we thought about that digit being a 5. Now that is all, oh, that's fascinating. That is fascinating for this Remban now, which is an extreme Remban, because whether this is 4 or 6, let's, let's make it 4, just for the sake of example. Now, this is a digit you can't put on this string. So to fill a five cell sequence without a consecutive sequence without using four and only using Sudoku digits, this would have to be five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, and obviously if this is six, we get one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I don't know. Um, Ah, right. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore that. I can't do that. I'm gonna use that two though. That seems reasonable. You can't put two in red because it'll bounce straight back into box nine and clash. So two is going to be in one of those squares. So two is two is off this arrow. That that feels to me like it's an important thought thought. So this arrow is now. It's got to have three on it. Sorry, I was thinking I could do better than that, but I, I, I think I can say it's got to have three on it. Because if it, it's got to add up to seven or eight and it doesn't involve a one or a two. So it is either three, four or three, five, and it definitely has three on it. And therefore this is not, this has not got three on it anymore. So this now is at least a one and a, a four which means this is at least a five and that's on the and that's on the arrow and that does it and that's beautiful so that's that's bad that's playing ping pong that the puzzle is playing ping pong there because basically yeah it sort of has has several knock-on effects so you knock two off this arrow which forces three onto this arrow which forces three off this arrow which knocks this up and, and forces this now to add up to at least eight because this digit is at least five. In fact, in fact, another way to, I mean, it is five, isn't it? It can't be anything else because if this, if this is adding up to more, we've got, got a real problem with putting this digit on this arrow. Yeah, so the, the fact two and three can't be on this arrow forces it to have a value of at least five, but it can't have a value of greater than five. So that's a one, four pair. Uh, this, therefore, is a 3-5 pair. Let's tidy up our pencil marks. This is adding up to 8. Well, I can, I can see I'm, doing, I'm getting 5 and 4 here. 5 is there. <laughs> that's the most useless place for it. Ah, ah. But 4 is looking at that. So that's 6. That's 4. And we do now have a high Renban. So we've got six, seven, eight, nine to place on the Remban because it can't have four on it. These can't be seven. And that can't be eight by Sudoku. What an incredible puzzle though. What an incredible puzzle. That's eight in the corner. No song. Uh, these two squares are two and seven, I think. Two, seven. These squares are three and four, and we can do them. There's a four there, so that's four, that's three. Um, can we get anything done with that? Yeah, we can actually. Where's three in this box? Now it's not there, it's not there, it's not there. If it was here, it would get transplanted to here where it cannot live. Because um, we've already, if you think about these two columns together, 
and ask a facetious question. And that facetious question is how many threes are we expecting there to be in these two columns of the grid? Now there's going to only going to be one three in that column and there's only going to be one three in that column. So that's two threes altogether. But there's one three there and there's one three there. So if I put a three there as well, that's three threes in two columns of the grid and that must break Sudoku. So the three goes there. Um, and now we can think about other things, hopefully. Um, what's my brain? What's my, what about those two digits? Can we get those? Six and seven. Maybe not. What about then? Oh dear. Don't get stuck now. I mustn't get stuck on this. This is such a good puzzle. It must be seen. Um, hmm. Having said which, that's not eight, I've just noticed. It's probably Sudoku. That's normally where... It's normally where I get stuck at three, four, six, seven. Actually, that might be, that might be a naked single in the corner. Let's just look at that. Three, four, six, seven. That square. So that's just doing column logic here. That can't be three. Oh, that's another way of seeing that three couldn't go there. Look, that can't be three or seven. That square can't be four and it can't be six or seven, which must appear in this little quadruple. So that is... That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, now these squares have to be one, two and five. And that's, an, that's a naked single in the other corner. That's got to be a five now. That means that that's a five because we can't put five here. It'll bounce in there and clash. That does the five and the three at the bottom, which is going to do the three and the seven, which does the six and the seven. That could be, yeah, the seven and the three. Here we go. Here we go. The six does the six and the nine. Now we can un unravel the, da the dominoes. That's a two, so that's a one. That's a one, that's a four. That's a four, that's a five. Oh, this is gorgeous. Now, a three, four, seven. That's a naked single, three. That's a seven, that's a four. All of those are just naked. That's a six. What are these two digits then? Five, nine? No, not five, nine, six, nine. Okay, I can't do that. Let's just pop them in and then work out what these have to be. Two, four, and seven, probably. So that's two or seven. And that's two or four. We chocolate teapotted, maybe. <laughs> um, no, hang on, there's a two here. That's not chocolate teapotted then, is it? So that's two, that's four, that's seven. That's four. And hopefully we can now, well, one, six, no, that's, that's, that we can do a bit better here. One, seven, eight, nine. That's a naked single, that's got to be eight. So let's put these in, one, seven, nine. And that's not seven. So this is one or nine. That's not seven by dint of this seven. So I've got a one nine pair here and I know that that is seven. And the one nine pair here means that in this row, I need to put two, three and six in. I'm just going, I'm just going to do it the long way. So that's two, three, six. That can't be three. So that's got to be two or six. Uh, that can't be three, so that's a two six pair, so that's a three. And from that we can deduce the following. Well, that's not six, I suppose. So these have to be an eight nine pair. Oh, the six here is lovely. So that gets two, two, six, six, nine, nine, eight, eight, two, six, eight, And now two seven seven nine 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 one one and these should be just naked now that's a six and that's a one 
What a brilliant puzzle. Good grief. That was not that oh, it was not that easy. 55 minutes. Um, let's see if it's right. Yes. 47 people in 22 hours. Uh, it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. It's a symphony. A symphony of logic from Playmaker. Uh, Artful Owl being extremely artful. Um, and not easy. I found the breaking quite complicated, actually. I mean, beautiful, but it was a whole. So it was a whole symphony of, of of interactions you had to consider in terms of the arrows, the X's, and then crucially how they impacted on this middle box. But it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I really like the way this this stuff at the bottom happened as well. Yeah, I mean, there's so much to admire in that. Well, that's happy birthday, Playmaker six one seven four for yesterday. As I said before. Uh, your gift to us feels the wrong way round, but I hopefully you'll get some kind comments um, that will uh, show you the appreciation that we all have for your puzzles. Um, as I say, let me know how you got on with the puzzle. We enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. Um, and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>